Good morning everybody and welcome back to the final of five parts in our LEGO The Legend of Zelda custom set showcase wave digi where we take the LEGO Mario course building system and give it a bit of a Zelda twist. Today we'll be looking at Z0035 with 587 pieces. This is the largest expansion set in the wave titled Ganon's Castle Boss Battle. Now, it may look a bit interesting from this angle, but I assure you there's a lot of interesting features that necessitate this big grey platform and lack of decoration, so let's get straight into it and take a look at that box art. So here on the left we have the box art, and just as I mentioned, this is an expansion set for the course building system using our DigiLink, and if you don't understand uh, what this is based off of, I suggest you watch my uh, Adventures with DigiLink starter course video, which explains this whole concept and premise, but basically the Lego Mario digital figure has been transformed into Link for these sets, and um, well, he's got a load of features that we'll take a look at one by one, and a load of interactions with these squareified characters. But as I mentioned, this is a £70 retail set for ages 8 and up that contains 5 Digi figures. And um, let's just give a quick read of that description and then open up the box. So, enter the largest expansion set for the DigiLink course building system and defeat Ganon. Using the Digital Link toy from Z0031 Adventure of DigiLink starter course, interact with 5 buildable characters and stomp, spin and jump and explode your way to victory. Stop off by the fishing pond or search for the Triforce, then face off against the biggest boss, Ganon. So here is the set all built up, but of course to get there we've got to see what's inside our box. And we have 10 numbered tags and the startup guide because as you all know by now, the DigiLink sets do not come with instructions, they're all digital. However, if we did have some instructions, we'll take a quick look inside and you would see that bag 1 builds the Lizalfo section, bag 2 builds some elements for the dungeon as well as a gate and a blue 2. Bag 3 builds the entire forest section, which includes that aforementioned fishing section as well as a piece of the Triforce. Bag 4 does bomber walls and some more dungeon pl platforms. Bag 5 builds the dungeon chest. Bag 6 does the keys rotating platform, which we'll take a closer look at in a minute. Bag 7 starts the Ganon boss battle and Bag 8 continues that theme. Bag 9 finishes off the boss platform, which has a very interesting feature to it. And bag 10, you build the one big bad himself, Mr. Ganon. So, I know some of you will have already seen this from watching the DigiLink starter course. For those of you that are new to this video, I thought we should quickly take a look at the two colours which you'll be seeing a lot of today, and that is red and uh, grey. Uh, red, when interacting with DigiLink's colour sensor, is representative of lava. Walking on lava will kill Link after just five seconds, but you have two ways to cancel this effect. You can either remove him from the red colour and the effect will top up, stop after two seconds, or when you take him off lava, you can shake Link and you can put out the fire and earn rupees. So let's take a quick demonstration of that. <coughs> And you can see in that example, uh, DigiLink died from the lava. There, we shook him and we earned some rupees and he came back to normal. The last colour I think it's important to take a look at is uh, the grey, as you'll be seeing a lot of that in this custom set with the dungeon. However, if you want the full breakdown, I would again recommend watching the starter course video. The colour grey represents dungeon. Walking on dungeon has a random chance of a flying pot appearing. When you hear the sound that indicates a pot is coming, you need DigiLink to freeze so you don't get hit by the pot. If you don't stop moving DigiLink when you hear the sound, you'll be knocked out for two seconds. <sighs> So in that scenario, DigiLink survived because when he heard the pot sound, he stopped moving. But in this scenario, we see him get hit by the pot because he doesn't stop. <laughs> and you can see he's knocked out for two seconds now. Anyway, none of you were here for that. Let's get in and take a look at the set. So the first thing you'll notice here that there's actually quite a lot included here. And the 587 pieces really do stretch quite away. You can see that we have a couple of spare platforms to help connect all the little um, uh, like play features that we'll take a look at in a minute. We've also got some decoration elements like a tree, some flowers and some stone brickwork to uh, make the dungeon look more interesting. As well as some joining platforms because you've obviously got to join this rearrangeable course building system together. And here are all those big elements which um, are the play features which are connecting together with the extras. There's a couple to take a look at so uh, we'll go through them one by one now. Let's start with the chew. 
So we have the little shoe enemy over on the left, which is built in a very similar way to my shoes from the main custom set showcase, although following the Lego Mario trend, this one is a lot more square. The first thing, of course, we have to do before we can scan him is knock him over. And once you've done that, you can see that his barcode is available on his back and he has one health point. So let's watch DigiLink uh, kill him. Hi. <laughs> You can see that you get five rupees from squashing the chew, and if you could hear very closely there, there was a disgusting little sound effect to represent the gelatinous blob getting it. It is the rest of the forest section, which is the sort of outside of dungeon section for this uh, course. And we've got a couple of little highlighting points here, one of which is the fishing pond, which is another five rupee reward. But you could also, just like the Mario's House and Yoshi set, just leave Link here and he could fish just whenever he likes. So this is sort of the Zelda equivalent of the hammock. So let's watch that interaction. And he plays the little tune from Ocarina of Time. And once again, I will apologize for my bad voice acting. You can see that not only do we have an interactive tile that gives him the reward, there's a little fishing pond um, and obviously fishing pole hung up above the water, as well as two orange fish swimming around on some clips. The other two items of uh, importance in the forest is this little decoration platform, but obviously you could spread that decoration across the entire course however you like, and this suspicious looking branch. I want to focus in on this suspicious looking culture a second and let's see what happens when DigiLink hits the actuator. Oh, it lifts up and reveals a barcode. But what barcode could that be? May it be a sacred force of golden energy? I think we found our first piece of the Triforce. <laughs> And there's appropriately dramatic sound effect, as well as the Triforce that appears on Link's torso when um, no other action uh, tile is present, is now lit up with the Triforce of Wisdom. There are three Triforce tiles hidden across this set that each will light up a different combination of the Triforce. And, well, this one happens to be the blue one. So um, that's sort of just like a reward. There'd be some rupees attached to that. And obviously the uh, goal of the Ganon's Castle one is going to be to get all three Triforces. And there's a big coin bonus just like the mystery blocks from Toad's Treasure Hunt from Lego Mario. Another enemy we have here is we have this green Lazalfos, who is built in a very similar style to the, uh, the Red Bow Coblin from the uh, starter course, and I think this worked out really well in the blocky style. You can see he's holding a sword, has his tail, and is using the Goomba feet in green. And this guy is a 10 rupee reward, and he has two health points, but of course first we have to knock him over. And once he's knocked over... <laughs> <laughs> he will take two hits to destroy, you'll get your 10 rupees, and you can see he also has his own unique death sound that plays on the last hit. Here is that rest of that dungeon section, and this is what I sort of call the dead end dungeon. You can get to the boss in one of two ways in the um, standard build of the start uh, expansion set. You can see that there's a couple of different enemies, a couple of different play features, and we're going to take a look at those now. So here we have this gate build, and you can notice very clearly that it is on hinges. Instead of pushing through the gates, we're going to knock this entire gate down. There's also some nice small details, like uh, the uh, pointy pieces on the top, and then obviously the gates that fall over. But of course, the main feature here is with DigiLink. <laughs> And you can see that if he puts his weight on that front side of the gate, the gate is going to fall over. The reason he played a sound there is because here we used a hard hit to get it done, so he hit really hard. And then you can see a barcode around the back, so let's see what happens when we scan that. <laughs> it plays the little secret jingle from the Zelda series, and he is rewarded with some more rupees. Next up, we're going to take a look at the keys. The keys both have an action tile on the back and are built in very similar ways to the swoops from the Lego Mario King's Boot Haunted Yard and Character Pack Season 3. However, I think this works perfectly representing the Breath of the Wild keys in a square format. You get two in this set and they go on a rotating platform, which we'll see now. When attached to this little dungeon build, it's a very simplistic build using one of the scaffolding pieces and a turning our Technic Rod, and what we can do is we can hit DigiLink to turn them around and then scan each of them uh, an unlimited amount of time to make the key spin. <laughs> <laughs> and 
what you can see happening there is that the keys are rotating and we're stomping on them around each rotation, which makes them rotate even more. And each time you hit them, you get just one rupee. Uh, but obviously you're going to spin them a lot and uh, they make a little key sound when you hit them as well. Oh, the voice acting in this series has been um, terrible funny. Moving on, uh, just like the other two expansion and starter sets, we have a treasure chest here. Here you can see uh, that just like the others, it has the actuation lever, which as I mentioned um, is for this series. There is a treasure head in every set, but it's based off the one from the Toad's Treasure Tracker. And when we hit it, <laughs> we reveal our second piece of the Triforce. <laughs> which when we scan, lights up the Triforce of Courage. I really wish that DigiLink wouldn't try to talk over me in these videos, but um, he has a certain habit for... Um, playing his sound effects too soon but anyway there's the second piece of the triforce hidden in this set's chest and obviously just like all the expansion sets when changing around the, the course building system you could put anything in those chests and hide the triforce almost anywhere else maybe even behind gliok from the starter set here we have a bombable wall section i think it's fairly obvious what happened here we've got an um an actuator like turntable and then a piece of rock <laughs> and upon a hard hit g link is going to break it open and just behind there, we do have another barcode, <laughs> which will once again play the secret jingle from the series and reward Link with some more rupees. We have this little segment, which is the second way you could enter the boss battle arena. You can either climb up this little uh, stone step and then get up to the boss, or you can take the lava stepping stones, which just like the starter course, you're going to have to do some parkour. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> which of course jumps DigiLink up to the arena, which is the best play feature probably in the entire wave. However, it's going to be a bit complicated to explain, I think. So here is the arena all built up. It's very simplistic and square. It's designed to uh, be somewhat reminiscent of the original NES, NES Ganon fight from uh, Zelda 1. You've got some lava on the side and you can clearly see that there are three holes and some gears that rotate. So firstly, let's talk about uh, these two action tiles, and both of these are the same. It just means that whatever side of the arena you come up on, first thing you've got to do is scan DigiLink on this tile, and that's going to start the boss battle. And that's the music that will play during this boss battle encounter. Once Digilink's been scanned on that tile, you can remove him and place him in one of these three locations. Either here on the left, where there's a hole uh, with some tiles beneath it, here in the middle, or here in the right. Now the purpose of this is that you're going to have to move Digilink between these three spots while turning the gears which you can see down in the bottom right of your screen. I've enlarged the image. And the point of this boss battle is you've got to put DigiLink on these three tiles one at a time so that you can get the three greens. So entering the, the boss battle tile sort of enters a sub mode of the game. You've still got your 60 seconds, but it's sort of like uh, you don't need barcodes. You just need to find the color green three times and it has to be from the three different holes because they've all got barcodes on them. So uh, what's the challenge here? Well, obviously, there is only one green per uh, spinning disc underneath uh, the floor, meaning that you'll have to move DigiLink to the three different cogs because they're all on uh, the one green is on the different ones. And also, the greens never show up at the same time. So you can't just turn the gear and align it and then just immediately go bomb, bomb, bomb and finish the boss. But of course, there's still no interaction with Mr. Ganon here. Now, the, the tricky part is, is that this center platform, which has the uh, 2x10 dark gray plate on it, or should I say 2x8, is where we put Ganon. And when Ganon's on there, he's going to spin much faster than the color wheels underneath DigiLink's feet, which means that you've got to dodge Ganon as he spins around. So you're going to be uh, flicking and turning your little cog just a bit, and then Ganon's going to get close and you're going to have to jump to another one, get the green, jump back, and jump backwards and forwards while trying to get the green. But if you get hit by Ganon, obviously, well, that's not going to bode well for you. So let's um, show this dodgy example of uh, DigiLink dodging Ganon. So it's kind of hard to see there, but as Ganon was round the back and as he was rotating towards Link, uh, DigiLink jumped towards the middle one. Then as Ganon caught up, he had to jump again. And then next, obviously, he would jump back to the left hand side, all while trying to line up the green and not get hit by the big man. So here's what's going to happen when Ganon hits the DigiLink. <laughs> 
But that dodgy animation was supposed to represent Ganon spinning around and then punching Link because obviously he was waiting on the middle one for Green, but Ganon got there first. You can see that Green was over on the right, so if Digilink had moved, he would have got one of the hit points he needed. Uh, but instead, <laughs> the middle... Uh, he, he was waiting on the middle one for Green to show up, but uh, Ganon rotated and punched him off and he got knocked out. Obviously, then, of course, you can knock Ganon down for a 20 rupee reward. Obviously, to do this, you had to have had the three green ones, which give you sort of like um, a power up to the Master Sword or whatever you want to do, or whatever you want to call it, really. And Ganon is a five hit enemy. Hi. 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 <laughs> and you can see once again Digilink is very happy as he gets his 20 rupee reward and Ganon makes a guttural scream as he dies on the spot and for those of you who don't know this is the NES Ganon uh, once again we'll take a proper look at him later but he is also built off the Bowser build from the uh, Bowser Castle expansion set so here is our last piece of Triforce hidden behind Ganon, so of course it's recommended that once you've defeated Ganon, that's when you go and get this Triforce. It's hidden right around the back where of course Ganon could actually hit you if you were um, still in boss battle mode, but the Triforce won't actually register until um, you've gone out of boss battle mode, which ends once you've actually stomped Ganon to death or the time runs out. <laughs> quite naturally hidden behind Ganon. This is the Triforce of Power. Completing the Triforce gives you a whopping 50 coin bonus because it's fairly difficult to do because you have to do the whole Ganon boss battle and the rest of it. However, this would be made easier using the Time Block from the Big Octo expansion set, another Digilink expansion set that I recommend you check out. So, here we, that was everything in the set. Um, I hope that play feature expansion, uh, explanation was clear. Of course, though, we have a couple more bits to take a look at. And as this is a course building system, this can be rearranged. The point of this is that you have all these little sections and all of these joiners and you re rearrange them to make different courses and different challenges. So this one, for example, you start in the middle, face off with the Zalfos and then have to choose to either go left or right before entering the final, final dungeon and then facing off against Ganon uh, with a little bit of a smaller dungeon. Now, the interesting thing I like about the gate is it sort of creates the feeling like you're entering the dungeon, or the bumble wall in this case almost feels like a secret cave. However, the really, the rearrangements are up to you. Of course, this is uh, only start half of the story, as when you have the starter course, which is where Digilink comes from, you get the starter bed and end heart container, which both start and end the 60 second timer, and you need those to be able to play the full level experience. When combined with the start and end, you get, uh, and obviously the starter course, you get a full experience of a level as that's the sole purpose of the expansion set. And you can spot the starter bed and end heart container uh, just with this level here. But as I mentioned earlier, there were five Digilink sets, all of which you can see on screen now combining the uh, starter course, Big Octo Battle, the two power up packs and the boss battle all into one big adventure. Uh, with two dungeons and some other bits on the left side. I talked about this briefly before, but uh, with the increasing prevalence of lava in the boss battle sets, it could be considered worthwhile to change into the Zora armor for Big Octo Battle, but then you'll definitely want to change out before you get to Ganon, or else you'd be a one-hit. So I think that I did a better job at the power-up packs than Lego Mario did, because um, there's a certain element of strategy that was implemented into mine, meaning that there were certain abilities that uh, they improved, but also some that they nerfed, meaning that throughout the level it's probably worth changing. But that was a bit of a waffle. Here is my final custom layout of all of the bits combined. You'll notice that some of the sets have now been mixed up. You can see that we'll do a couple of close-ups now. First up, we have this starting section. So this is just zoomed into that big layout from before. You've got the start bed going into a large forest where you can actually find the first piece of Triforce very early. And you've also got a little Lazalfos encampment instead of a Bokoblin. You then through, go through a gate into the first dungeon, which includes the little key segment, the build from the champion tunic link uh, power up pack and the fight with gliok which results in a chest which should give you extra time you can then progress through another section of forest which leads down to a small beach which takes you out to sea using the zora link uh, platforms where you can fight the bokoblin big octo go for a ride on the king of red lions and right out on the far distant island there is another treasure chest which contains well a piece of the triforce once again then off in the distance, you can see you have to cross the lake. There's the fishing pond and the chew, which you could knock over before reaching the bumble wall, which hides the final dungeon. 
which of course is the last segment where you fight off against the iron knuckle, the final chest which has some rupees in it, and then uh, progress to the Ganon boss fight at the end of the level, and there you can see the last piece of Triforce and the uh, uh, end of heart container level. And that's my combined level. Uh, I like the way it came together using all five different sets. Um, let me know what you guys would combine down below. Okay, so taking a look at the characters before we finish up today, I realise this has been a long video, but there's a lot to share with this biggest set, and obviously this is our final Digilink starter course set, so this is my last opportunity to share some bits with you before um, next week. So this is Ganon, he's designed off the original NES appearance of Ganon, which you can see on the screen, although some liberties have been taken. I chose his, uh, to change his colour scheme to Dark Turquoise because I thought it was more catching for Lego, and the rest of him is mostly red. He's got a skull on the chain, which is the representation of his skull that was on his uniform. You may notice that he's actually built in a very similar way to the Bowser build from the Bowser Castle boss battle from Lego Mario. This was deliberate to sort of keep that square aesthetic going, although I definitely make some changes to the head. The stomach is basically identical and the arms are identical too, but I think it adds this nice level of um, consistency between this and uh, the Mario side of things. Next up we have the Green Lazalfos, which is probably, uh, I guess, my favourite of the brick-built characters, to be honest. I really love the way he came out, and I think he perfectly combines the square aesthetic that I uh, pioneered with the Boko and Octo from previous sets and um, turned him into the lizard in this form. He's also got those soulless eyes just like the other ones and I, and I really do think that between him, the Octo and the Boko there are three really standout Digi characters here. Here is of course the representation being the Breath of the Wild as Alphos but of course he's much more square and much more simplified and much more cheapified as well. Moving on though, have the blue chew which is a really simple build to do basically he's just a core with square bricks on the side and then the splat piece in two by two on the bottom just like my normal chews this one however is sort of a hybrid between the wind waker chew and the breath of the wild chew but it's a really nice simple build you really couldn't have seen me not doing the chew considering how simple it is and i really like the way it came out Next up, we also have the piece, which is a 2x2 printed tile to represent the eye and have the action tile on the back. Like I mentioned earlier, this is pretty much an identical build to the swoops from the King Boo Haunted Yard and Character Pack Season 3 from Mario, except for the feet are different, and obviously the eye is different, and then also, uh, well, just it's, web it's built in the same way as the Boo Haunted Yard keys. And here is, of course, a reference uh, being based off the Breath of the Wild keys. I nearly did the Skyward Sword keys, but because the eye was so large and prominent on the Breath of the Wild one, I thought that this was probably the best representation of the keys I could do. And actually, I like this keys much more than my Wave 2 keys. Okay, so that was Ganon's Castle boss battle, or Ganon's boss battle, or whatever you want to call it. And this was an expansion set, and I really like how this came out. And once again, I think the box art is substantially better than a lot of my box art. I really like the encounter with Ganon, if a little confusing, and the Lazalfos in Keys a particular stands out. Honestly, if I was going to change some things, I'd probably add some more to the forest, maybe a fairy fountain or something, but there's always the remastered series. Overall, I'm really proud of this one, so let me know what your guys' favourite play feature, favourite character, uh, from all across the Digilink realm, as well as what you thought of the final climactic battle with Ganon. I really wanted to do something special, considering how amazing the, uh, the Bowser Castle boss battle was. Um, but no, I just want to hear all the feedback really down below, and um, I really hope you guys enjoyed it. But of course, this marked the end of our journey. We had a starter course, two power-up packs, and two expansion sets, all of which you can see on screen, and we have a full playlist available to you to watch whenever you feel like to see all five together. However, that does not quite mark the end of our Digilink journey. I had one last special fan request video, and considering the release of LEGO Luigi in just a couple of weeks' time, I think it's more than fitting to uh, put this one in uh, at the end of the showcase. So tune in next week for um, Link's version of Luigi, and I think you'll be interested to see what I do with her. And um, it won't be a long one, but I thought it'd be worth showing you all the same. And then, of course, we're not too far along from starting Wave 3 of the Custom Set Showcase. And I think that will be a real treat. It's one of my favourite waves, uh, looking at the finished box art. I'm just getting prepped to edit those, and um, you'll be seeing those very shortly. I'm going to do a drawing tutorial as well, and I realise I'm waffling now. On screen now, you're going to see a couple of extra images for the Digilink sets. Here are all the Digilink variants that I drew for all five of these sets. And while it may just look like I changed their tummies and eyes, Trust me, this was much more painful and took a longer time than you would ever think to imagine. And what a fun ride. You know, it's not a serious line of sets. It's not like my other custom set showcase. And I realise that a lot of people probably don't care and just think he looks creepy. Oh, but what a fun ride. I really hope you guys have enjoyed this one. And that will be me 
signing off on The Legend of Zelda Wave G. Goodbye, and thank you for watching.